storytelling is the big star is the is the main subject for me yes okay that is my main the reason why I want to sit obviously for two and a half hours to talk about storytelling mm -hmm. but we take we come to a place that is <coughs> the plane is diving you're on the wing you uttered hope you took it back um, I tried to segue over to what about the younger generation you skillfully deflected it and now you're going to leave for the United States yeah. the biggest commercial narrative engine in the world outside of Bollywood um, and you are going to navigate that system yeah. okay so maybe I'll go here <laughs> I'm feeling totally ridiculous here yeah the theater is in trouble here theater's mm -hmm. always been in trouble but every generation is a new set of troubling things about it on the way out can you give us some here's like three things that I would do if I was the god of theater mm. in Canada this is what I would do mm. I think theater is in terrible trouble I think it's endemic I think it's bone deep too um, I think every theater program um, uh, training institution um, uh, should end. I think one of the problems, it's sort of like a corporation. You know, my, my theater company is called Signal and it's an Ontario corporation. And we were talking about what we'd like to do when I leave the directorship of it. And we got into all of this stuff about like, you know, bylaws and the, the corporate ease of, of, of it. And then we're like, well, we have to look for a succession, then we have to look for a board of directors, and we have to do this, and then, and, then, and then in the end we were like, the reason why Signal exists is to allow Yvette Nolan, myself, and Brittany Ryan tell stories. If any one of us leaves the organization, the organization shouldn't exist. So um, Signal is closing um, uh, because we, we've all moved into different places and, and we're not going to tell stories that way anymore. Um, I look at theater departments in the same way and I'm part of one. And we have, and uh, we've been having discussions every year for the, you know, 20 odd years that I've been in, involved in, in the department about how do we make ourselves better and the problem is that we believe that there's something intrinsically valuable about the structures of it like well, we can't get rid of theater history that's the like how would how, how can we train a student if they don't know something about what happened before and then we go okay who's history Who's telling that story? And we think that theater um, practitioners are innovators. And what I've found is that um, we are often, and I'll include myself in this, we're often the most stick in the mud traditionalists that there are. Uh, a student wrote to me in a, in a report that I asked them to you know, make comments about, about the action initiatives that we're doing to decolonize our program. And um, uh, they said, uh, I'm a double major in, in, in criminology. And in our first year at York, we are studying um, how law and, and the criminal system impacts indigenous people. It's a mandatory course. He said, what, why isn't there something like that happening in the theater department? And the answer? Why isn't it? Because they don't want to. If they wanted to, it would be. They would hire an indigenous professor to teach it. It's just not that important. No one wants to give up these jobs. No one wants to... Uh, mandate themselves out of a out of a retirement the the very structures of it support continuations 
of systems and ways of thinking. 